So now that we've discussed uh, working with antiderivatives, being able to find antiderivatives given a function, compute certain kinds of antiderivatives, the next piece we're going to work with is something called a Riemann sum. Now today's this, this work is not going to involve so much a computation to get a result. This is terminology and some notions and ideas are going to be important for us going forward in this work. And so the, 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 the notion we're going to be after here is something called a Riemann sum. Uh, Riemann sum is, is Riemann named after the great uh, German mathematician uh, Georg Bernhard Riemann. And uh, he developed this work in the 1800s. And these ideas are just pivotal for the work we're going to be developing uh, as we go through the rest of the semester. Now, uh, suppose we have a function defined on a closed interval. That's all we require. We're going to actually modify that a little later. But for now, we have any function defined on a closed interval. The first big idea, this is a really, it's a simple idea, but it's, it is really uh, important and we get a lot of mileage out of this idea. It's a, a notion called, spell it correctly, a partition. A partition of an interval. Now the symbol the textbook uses to represent a partition is delta. And so that's not universal. You go to a different text, they might use a different letter. Uh, when I first did this, we simply used capital P to represent a partition. This textbook uses the capital delta to represent a partition. Now, it's a very straightforward idea, and it's not particularly complicated. And really, some of the best ideas are the simple ideas that lead to other things. And that's really the idea of a partition. Um, if a, b is a closed interval, then a partition, delta, is a set of points. So if AB is a closed interval, then a partition of this interval, I'm going to call it delta, is a set of points. And a partition, really in its basic form, is simply a set of points. There are some requirements. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a number line up here. Here's A, here's B, and I'll draw the picture alongside, so I think this becomes very clear. It is this. Delta is a set of points. For reasons that become clear later on, we typically start numbering them x0. x0 is, a, let's, let's just list them. <clears throat> x number 1, x number 2, x number 3, and so on. And you may have as many or as few as you desire. Any number of points is allowed. Um, and so we have x3, and then so on, and then this ends with x sub n. So we have, starting at 0, x1, x2, x3, and so on. Now notice, the number of points, I'm not finished with this symboling yet, sim this symbolism yet, uh, but the number of points is not n. Notice, when I say x1, there are 1, 2 points. When I say x2, there are 1, 2, 3 points. Since we're starting the numbering at 0, if I have x3, there are 1, 2, 3, 4 points. And so the number of points is this subscript plus 1. So if I have x sub n, there actually are n plus 1 points. So that's my set of points. Now think about what's the first one I omitted. I'm sorry, the last one. The last value I omitted is x subscript n minus 1, comma, xn. And then what's the one I left out before that? That would have been x subscript n minus 2, and so on. Now, the re there is a requirement. I'm going, to, I'm going to erase this and start over because there is a requirement with these points. We require 
we require that x0, the first point of the partition, must equal a. And then we have x number 1. Now, the next requirement is this. x0 must be the left endpoint of the original integral. So in this picture, this must be x0. And when we finish, xn must equal b, the right endpoint. So this must be x sub n. Between there, you have as many as you like. The other requirement is they must be in order. x number 1 is, so x0 is less than x1, which is less than x number 2, which is less than x number 3, and so on. Now, what's the first one I left out? This is xn. I'm sorry, this is, sorry, the last. The last one I left out, x sub n, this would have been xn minus 1. And you may include or exclude as many of these as you desire, whatever is required for you to get the point across. And so all we require is they must be in sequence. So this is, if this is x0, maybe this is x1. Maybe the next one is x2 is very close. Maybe x3 is here. And this continues. This is x sub n. What's the one immediately in front of that? Maybe it's uh, right here. That is x sub n minus 1. We may, if we wish, include xn minus 2. We may include or exclude as many of these as we desire to get the point across for our particular work. And so that's a partition of the interval from A to B. Um, as long as you have x0 is equal to A and xn is equal to B, the number of, we generate what are called sub-intervals. The number of sub-intervals you generate is irrelevant. If all you're after is a partition, you must include, this is x0, so here's x0, maybe here's x1, maybe there's x2, and maybe that's xn. There, that's my partition. You may have as many or as few as you like, as long as they are in sequence, so x1 must be between x0 and x2, and so on. As long as they're in sequence, as long as the first is equal to a, the last is equal to b, that, cor that corresponds to a partition. So delta is that set of points that is the partition of that interval.